Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I explore another interesting idea I have had. It is a good idea this time, this is not a crazy idea. Uh, the issue here, the thing I'm trying to fix if you will, is that NASA's Orion spacecraft that they're developing has a very limited service module. It has very limited propellant, it can do very limited things. And so it, I noticed that NASA has also got documentation on the development of a nuclear thermal rocket system meant to send missions over to Mars that they are also developing. And I thought, what if we could put one of those fuel tanks from the NTP architecture, nuclear thermal propulsion architecture, uh, and one of the engines from that architecture onto a system that is meant to make round trips to the moon. Uh, so we won't throw it away immediately. Uh, it is meant to come back, hang out in orbit, and then attach to something else uh, to refuel or something like that, and then go out again. And it would carry Orion. And could we make that work, potentially, is the question. That's the issue here, and I'm here to explore that. We have a standard SLS Block 1B, so this is the rocket NASA has been developing. The idea is NASA should be able to put this together. Now, as far as the wisdom of putting a nuclear engine on a service module, if you will, and there's a pretty heavy service module now, the whole business is very heavy, and that's part of the test. Can SLS lift this to a decent orbit and still get it on its way to the moon is a question. Uh, but as far as the wisdom of that is concerned, we do have to take into account that they're planning to develop the NTB architecture for a Mars mission that is crewed. So they'll have to figure out how to make it safe. And that is part of the package that uh, they are developing. So I'm just taking that as an assumption that it will be safe. So anyway, with that in mind, and with us in line with the moon, I'm going to ignite the what were once the space shuttle main engines, ignition. And launch. So off we go, a nice sunrise launch for us, thankfully. Thankfully it's not in the dark. Okay, getting ready for booster step and separation. I'm just gonna go ahead with launch escape system jettison now. So off it goes. So there's sort of an adapter section here and potentially if we need to put more of the service module stuff in there, uh, we can. The Orion does not rely on fuel cells, so it doesn't have that issue. It's We've got solar panels on the bottom end of our service module, if you will, so those are there. Um, they would probably need to be an umbilical for the electrical system. Uh, we are carrying the supplies internally in the pod at this point. If there are some recycler systems, they would have to go here, so that's the idea. We are retaining the heat shield, though potentially I might not want this to be the vehicle that brings them back into the atmosphere necessarily. Uh, it'd be good to have this park in orbit and then have something else retrieve them, but the heat shield can stand as a proxy for any sort of lead shielding or some other thing to make it uh, more safe radiation-wise for the crew if that turns out to be necessary or whatever other mass we need. So we're retaining the heat shield and potentially, you know, the pod could come back into the atmosphere and we would like redock some uh, some new spacecraft to it. So that could happen as well. Another thing, well, we probably want the heat shield to be, if we are going to keep a heat shield, we would probably want it to be sort of, sort of attached like this to prevent it from being hit by micrometeoroids. Otherwise, uh, having to flip around and dock here, well then, but then it'd have, need to have special RCS for that, for docking, so that's a little bit complicated. Given the mass of uh, this up here, the upper stage for SLS will not be able to get us all the way to the moon on its own. We will have to use some of the fuel here in order to do that. This is a very heavy tank, 
that's just how it is for a really large hydrogen tank for a nuclear thermal rocket system. So that's one of the downsides to this. The dry mass of the system is very high. The upside is that the engine is very efficient. So the question is whether that balance is worthwhile or not. Okay, we're coming to the end of the core stage. And separation. And all right, well, let me just keep that safe. Ignition. I fit the RL-10Cs from my Atlas V on here. They don't look necessarily fit for the SLS Block 1, but they'll do. At least they have the right stats. And we've got some time to make orbit. We're not that far from orbit right now, as you can see. Uh, we need 7,800 meters per second, and we've got most of that. But this stage can take some time to deliver that. We're not too bad off for the transfer to the moon, actually, when you take a look at 2,600 meters per second here. Well, we'll have a little bit less than that, but that's not too bad. I don't think our service module... well, okay, the nuclear thermal system is reading all of its delta-v right now. We'll see. Um, I, yeah, because our decoupling is not quite, quite right there. Let's get those panels off too. Now we're reading all of it. Okay, there we go. So you can see the prodigious amount of delta V that we have given this system, despite the dry mass of it. But the question is whether it can do what we were intending for it to do. And what we are intending for it to do is to go to the moon, make orbit around the moon, break orbit from the moon, come back to the Earth, and make or a low orbit around the Earth again. This is similar to the plan for the pair, if you recall uh, my uh, sort of Soviet-style system for transferring crew to the moon. I called the pair because of its shape. It also had a nuclear engine. And so this is basically the, the NASA American version of the pair. Now, it would be good to have a lunar gateway to rendezvous with, but actually what we're planning to do around the moon would cost more delta V than a rendezvous with the lunar gateway, so it should be okay as a proxy. We're carrying four crew and we have 12 days worth of supplies. Okay, getting to the end of this stage. Shut down, separation, and ignition of the nuclear engine, which takes a while to ignite. So we also have radiator panels to control our thermal situation on the liquid hydrogen tank because we need to control boil off. We also have solar panels because solar panels are necessary even though we have a nuclear engine because not all nuclear engines provide electrical power and this one doesn't. There's no plan for NASA's NTP architecture uh, thinks that that one solar panel is still stowed, so that's a flaw, but anyway, otherwise we've got enough solar panelry once we hit sunlight. But yeah, not all nuclear engines are designed to also provide electrical power. So looking at the budget now, we'll be down to 5,000 meters per second after this, and then we need 800 to capture, 800 to break orbit, so that's 1,600, and then 3,000 in order to get back into low Earth orbit. So that's in total 4,600. So it seems like we have enough for the whole round trip. There still seems to be some boil off though. So oh, you can see this wall temp. I might have to fix the tanks. Are these on? They say that they're on. Maybe we'll need larger radiators or something. We'll see what the boil off situation is, but that might be a problem. In principle, these should be zero boil off tanks, otherwise the whole NTP architecture that they're planning on would not work. But I have not figured out exactly how to reliably control the boil off in Kerbal Space Program necessarily, so. 
Okay, here comes our lunar orbit. Okay, well, a bit of a mid-course correction would do. I'm gonna get it equatorial instead of anything too fancy. We should expect to plan for a mid-course adjustment. To hit whatever location that we plan on hitting. Probably it'd end up being in a polar orbit and lunar gateway, but still. Again, getting into a full low lunar orbit is still going to be more taxing in general, assuming the timing is good, than rendezvousing with Lunar Gateway. So, it is a sufficient test. And now the question is boil off. So we see our liquid hydrogen. There is, There are digits there. If there was no boil off, it'd just read 0, not 0, 0.00. And as we time warp... Most of the digits aren't really severe. We've got 326,000 units of liquid hydrogen. Now we're getting some digits there. But it doesn't seem too bad. And we're basically exposing this broad side of the tank to the sun, if that mattered. I'm not too sure whether it does or not. But we could certainly point tail first to the sun to reduce things. But at the current rate, I don't feel a special need to. Okay, time for the mid-course adjustment. Now, the RCS on this is just MMH and NTO, uh, storable. And so that's not a big problem. It's the ports up here. I decided to have the tank oriented this way so that the ports could also be used for docking. This is where the ports, the RCS ports are on the NTR proposal from NASA, so that has not changed. And we'll just go ahead and do this with the engine, even though we probably don't need that much power. Okay, that should be good enough. On to the moon. Okay, we can see our approach here. And we're at 132 kilometers right now. The lunar surface is very dark at the moment, unfortunately. But here we go for the capture burn. We're still 53 tons, notice. And obviously by default, uh, SLS Block 1B cannot send 53 tons to the moon, but we've used some of this stage in order to help that out. So this engine is a 110 kilonewton engine, which is what they said they were trying for. 111 kilonewtons there. Specific impulse, 875 seconds of ISP. Okay, because I was late on the burn, we're a little bit lopsided. I'll correct that. And then we'll aim to proceed home. So, we'll go to the new periapsis and readjust. Now, of course, if we could get some water off of the moon, we could refuel the hydrogen here, but we don't need to for this particular kind of mission. If we wanted to use this sort of stage for some other payload except for Orion, maybe it could carry something heavier and then it would need the lunar replenishment. It's got a longish burn time, but for what we're using it for, it's not a big deal. Um, the longest burn we would have is for the Earth capture burn. Well, Earth bringing it down from high orbit to low orbit burn, I should say. Uh, and that can be done on multiple passes, but probably to avoid the, the radiation belts and all, we should just do it in one long burn. Then, But by that time, we will have done a few burns with it and the stage time will not be so severe. Okay, that'll do. Uh, 75 by 54 orbit is fine. And now we'll just go out back to Earth. Okay, we want to make sure it's outside Earth's atmosphere because we're going to manually retro burn into a lower orbit. We haven't used very much of our RCS, but a lot of that would be used for docking. 
Unfortunately, our fourth solar panel doesn't want... Oh, now it's extending. Okay, good times. I think we've lost some Delta V along the way somehow, so... They might, that might have been boil off. The estimates are a lot closer than I was expecting when we were still in low Earth orbit. But still workable. It's a fairly tight system for the purpose that we're putting it to. Obviously, if uh, I had been certain that the numbers would work out, there wouldn't be much need to test it. As it's going, it's a very close thing. So off we go after a very, very brief visit around the moon. Okay, 0, 0.0 on the node. How are we doing? Still outside the atmosphere, but barely. Maybe we can lift that up just a little bit. Okay. And we are going back, but will we have enough delta V given boil off? Right now we do uh, to bring the orbit down just barely. It takes about 3,000 meters per second, but if there's some boil off of the liquid hydrogen, we might lose some of that. Still 44 tons. And again, the dry mass of the tank is very heavy. And it also looks like we'll be in the dark again. Oh well, wait, at least we got to launch in daylight, but everything else did not happen in daylight. So, let's see if we can manage a single retro burn to get into low orbit, thus avoiding prolonged exposure to the radiation belts. Of course, we passed through them, but we were passing through them very fast there. If we spend two orbits getting into low Earth orbit, then our apoapsis will be passing through the radiation belts, and that would be unfortunate, because in that case, we'd be spending a lot of time in it. Okay, and here we go, settling the fuel down, and retro. And there our orbit goes down. Need to keep an eye on the periapsis to make sure it doesn't go down too much. We might have started this burn a little bit late given our stage time right now. Well, the timing of this burn left a lot to be desired. It looks like we needed a little bit more lead time. That's why we're pointing down by 14 degrees of pitch, so that's not great for our delta V, but I think we still have enough. Still, as we go higher, we're having to pitch down even further. Okay, that's about my limit, so we should have started that burn earlier. I'll go around though. We've got the apoapsis to 3,633 kilometers and the periapsis is low so I don't want to keep burning like that. But just a matter of burn timing would have satisfied that. We'll see whether we can get fully into a low orbit here. We should be able to. Well, it looks like I overcompensated and started that retro too early. Okay, well that's a very low orbit. Let's get into daylight. We can lift the orbit. Uh, obviously we've used most of the liquid hydrogen here, but we can lift the orbit with the RCS still. We have plenty of MMH and NTO to make those kinds of adjustments. But overall it's a very successful system. It seems to work for its purpose. We've got a dry mass. Well, it's not really a dry mass. We've still got the MMH and NTO. So we're at a mass of 30 tons here back in low Earth orbit. And if we go prograde here, we can lift things up to a more uh, safer orbit in general. But anyway, getting to such a low orbit already demonstrates that it can handle the situation. Uh, the actual dry mass, uh, it's not reading properly here anyway. Okay, but you get the picture. I think it's actually a good thing if NASA does this. Because first of all, you get to test the NTP architecture tanks and engines without sending them all the way to Mars, and that could be useful. It obviously extends the usage of Orion as a sort of Earth-to-Moon bus. If they're thinking that it can last for that long, of course it'll have to be you know, reusable for that purpose or last for a long time in orbit, and it might not be specifically designed for that, but I think it is. 
Otherwise, we could put some other module on the top of it that can survive for that kind of time as long as it's the same mass and the crew is meant to spend about two weeks inside of it. Otherwise, it just has to loiter or uh, hang out at a dock. But yep, so here I am just lifting the orbit and I think it, it's a good idea. But what do you think? I'll leave it to the comments and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.